what can I do to help um, keep my kiddos safe um, uh, around social media, around cyberbullying, and around suicide? Don't send pictures of your wee wee. <laughs> <laughs> Look, look up pictures of other people's wee wee and That's go to good. bed. <laughs> and when we were kids, if my mom and dad were recording me when I was out with my friends all the time, I would have found that 100% oppressive and ridiculous. <laughs> Um, and in many ways, the social media space where kids are living is just like they're outside playing. What we're really talking about, I think, in all of this is how do you deal with friendship? Like, how do you communicate in friendship? And this is just one other way that we are able to do that now. Don't post anything that you wouldn't want me or your mom to see. Don't post anything that, that other parents are going to see and is going to cause problems for that kid. Like, you were, you, you've been a teenager. You know what crazy stuff is. <laughs> like, but kids also need limits and want structure. And they need permission to not be on their phones all the time. I have ways to manage what internet goes to which devices in the house and when. Apps won't solve these problems. We need to teach our kids and mentor our kids on how to approach these problems. But you get around it, right? Yeah. You, so you sneak around. I guess we're expecting, um, you know, we're expecting we're going to find all of this salacious or inappropriate stuff. And it turns out that, in fact, they're actually using it pretty damn appropriately. And they're also these kids these days are really kind of boring. You don't want to leave them unmonitored, but you don't want to micromanage. I think a lot of this is about the parents' anxiety more than it is about the kiddo. That it's sort of like grounding, like it's like the it's like the digital version of grounding. Like you really can do manage those things. And you, in my opinion, is that you should set that stuff up ahead of time so that the kids know that that's a consequence. Uh, if you come across a kid talking about suicide, you've got to get adults involved. Also. Kids will download other messaging apps that will allow them to message their friends. This is one of the easiest ways to bypass stuff like that. Um, would you be okay with Max and Chloe if they did, if they felt uncomfortable telling you? Would you be okay with it if they called the, a crisis line and got an adult involved that way? Absolutely. Kids don't tend to want to get the help from like parents and stuff, especially if they can avoid it. But it's impossible for you as their friend to keep them safe 24 seven. And that's an unfair burden. So sometimes kids look out for each other and don't tell adults. Oh yeah. It's an incredible burden for a young person to be in the position of I'm the one keeping my friend alive. That's a boy. Listening to you ramble on about stuff in the car is fun. And also I don't have much else to do. I just realized just now that the reason I know what crisis lines are are from, I believe, a 1976 sketch of Dan Aykroyd playing Jimmy Carter on a talk show. So in a very, very short period of time, so like in less than your lifespan, that there are national numbers that people your age sort of take it for granted, that they know about Crisis Text Line, and that they would call a lifeline and get advice. Like that's a very large cultural mm -hmm. shift in a decade. Yeah.